Hello everyone, greetings of the day. Welcome to the Raj Malhotra IS Institute and this is the Smart Crash Course for Civil Service Examination Prelims 2020 and we are starting with lecture 8 into the Science and Technology section and the topic for today's lecture is Mobile Technology and Computers. So let's begin. Alright, so first as part of this uh, video we are going to understand mobile technology. Alright, so you know that uh, when you use mobile, you are experiencing various kind of technology like there is uh, GPRS, there is Edge, then there is 1G, 2G and everything. So, uh, the first concept that we are going to discuss is we are going to look into the evolution of uh, mobile technology that has occurred from the first generation to second to third to fourth and now recently the fifth generation of 5G mobile network. Along with this, we will be dealing with some of the additional uh, concepts that are there in this such as GPRS, LTE, UMTS, we are going to talk about um, GSM, etc. So, if we look at uh, uh, these 1G, 2G, 3G, 4G, 5G, here G stand for the different generations of the mobile network communication. Alright, 1G being the earliest and 5G being the latest. Alright. So these generations, they uh, basically differ from each other on certain uh, parameters. The first parameter is period or the time of the development. Like for example, 1G developed at, uh, in 1980s and 5G developed in 2020s. All right. So then second is bandwidth, third is frequency, fourth is data rate and fifth is technology and sixth is the characteristic features that are associated with each generation that uh, differentiate between uh, them respectively. So we'll start with the first generation that is the 1G mobile network communication. 1G developed in the time period between 1980 to 1990 and it has analog signal. Uh, so you can say that it operated at 30 kilohertz bandwidth and with an analog signal. It was not digital. The speed was just nearly 2 kilobits per second. And the characteristic feature is that it was the first wireless communication. So you have to keep in mind it was cellular analog. Now let's talk about the 2G. The 2G developed in 1990 to 2000 and it was operating at 1.8 gigahertz digital bandwidth. All right. So the speed was 64 kilobits per second. It's not bytes, it's kilobits, be small, remember that. And the speed of internet or you can say data was somewhere around 64 kilobits per second. And it was the first ever digital cellular network that uh, rested upon GSM. GSM stands for Global Standards of Mobile Communication. Alright, so this digital cellular network was based upon GSM. GSM was the platform that was given as Global Standards of Mobile Communication which was developed by ETSI. ETSI stands for European Telecommunication Standard Institute. So it is ETSI that gave the concept of GSM. So GSM was first deployed in the year 2001 in the country that is Finland. You know that Nokia belonged to this country, Finland. So it was Finland where 2G was first uh, revealed or, uh, or you can say GSM was first time introduced. The third is third generation 3G mobile. It started uh, development 2000 to 2010. It has a bandwidth of 100 megahertz at digital frequency and uh, the frequency operation is 1.6 to 2 gigahertz. Speed is high 144 kilobits to 2 megabits per uh, second of speed. So it provided the digital broadband on mobile uh, platforms and that means that it enhanced the internet speed. Some of the associated te technology with 3G are uh, G, uh, CDMA, UMTS and Edge. CDMA stands for Core Division Multiple Access. Alright, this is detail in your class, mein kar rakha hai, so I am not covering right now here. UMTS stands for Universal Mobile Telecommunication Standards. Alright, and then last is EDGE or we can call it EDGE. EDGE is also a 3G associated technology that stands for Enhanced Data for Global Evolution. So CDMA, UMTS, EDGE, they are the technologies associated with 3G. Now let's talk about the 4G. 4G uh, developed in 2010 or unleashed in 2010 for commercial uh, purpose is still applicable today. It has a bandwidth of 100 megahertz with a frequency operation between 2 to 8 gigahertz frequency. The speed is quite fast that it is it is operating at 100 megabits per second to 1 gigabits per second. And uh, the technology which uh, was unleashed along with 4G was LTE or long term evolution. Now this long term evolution it allow the it allowed to communicate 
voice and data simultaneously. Alright, so what is happening that when you are using a LTE phone, your data will be routed through uh, LTE or 4G mechanism and the voice will be routed through your device uh, from 2G or 3G. So when you are on voice, you will not be able to use LTE and when you are using LTE, you will not be able to use voice. Alright, so this was a limitation of LTE that same 4G carrier cannot be used for voice as well as data. So 4G was purely for data. Uh, and uh, 2G, 3G in the mobile was used for voice. However, this uh, weakness or limitation was done away with VOLTE voice over long term evolution. Just the upper 2019 UPSC prelims mein sawal bhi hai. So, this VOLTE, what it is doing, it will it is going to convert your voice into data packets. Alright, so instead of voice analog signal, it is converted into data packets digital, and therefore, because LT is used for data these digital packets can be sent from LTE as well. So there's no need of 2G, 3G antenna on your, in your phone. You can use simply 4G or uh, 4G network to send your voice as well. Now this 5G, if we talk about the fifth generation, it is under developmental stage and commercially it will be released somewhere around 2020, that is this particular year. And we talk about the features of 5G. Number one, 5G has very high data rate, speed. So it is around, if you talk about the public uh, hotspots or public Wi-Fi spots, it is going to be 1 gigabits, uh, gigabits per second for hotspots. Usi hotspot pe 100 megabits ki download speed aegi, 50 megabits per second ki upload speed aegi with a wide area range. Alright, so this was about public places. If we talk about the domestic and office, the speed is going to be somewhere between 2 to 20 gigabits per second, which is very fast as compared to 4G network. Apart from this uh, uh, this uh, um, thing that is 5G, it is going to provide a massive bandwidth that is going to accommodate approximately 1 million connections per square kilometer. So in a huge densely uh, located area, call drop ki problem will resolve because 8 million connections very easily per square kilometer area may accommodate ki ja sakti hai. Because of the fast speed, number 3. Uh, 5G is going to have very low latency that is it will is going to give you a very quick response to your clicks because of the latency of as low as 1 millisecond. Now it is having high reliability that is there will be no call drops and because now we are uh, developing fastest means of transport like bullet trains where you will be traveling at 500 km per hour mobile connections need to be connected and it can only be provided by 5G. So 5G is going to provide mobile connections even while traveling at very high speeds. Now there was another concept that is voice over Wi-Fi. Now many of the telephone companies like Jio, Vodafone, Airtel, they are offering voice over Wi-Fi. So let's understand this. It is nothing but same as VOLTE. So this is your mobile phone. It convert your voice into data. Now this data can be sent through LTE or home Wi-Fi. If it is being sent through LTE, it is VOLTE. If it is sent through home Wi-Fi, it is voice over Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi is uh, providing faster speed than the mobile network and therefore the voice over Wi-Fi is having a better voice quality and sometimes it is referred to as HD voice by the various telecom companies. Now uh, let's go and discuss the another concept which is known as public domain name server. So it is PDNS. So what, uh, what the government is doing, the government is deciding or is uh, about to launch a public domain name server which will be located within India. So domain name server as we call it DNS. DNS is a system for internet users in the country or you can say it is a server that will store uh, that store some domain names and these domain names what they do is they convert uh, your uh, user friendly URL into machine friendly IP address. So what is the purpose of the localized DNS? The data of the citizen of the country will be stored within the country. At present, this data is stored in DNS server located in US, UK, Finland and other foreign countries. So DNS, as I told you, is a system that convert the domain names into internet protocols. So we humans, we like to read domain names. Like for example, uh, the website uh, Raj IS Academy is a website which has a domain name. It has to be converted into IP internet protocol which will be read by machine all right so this uh, dns converts this thing like for example google.com is domain name which is human friendly and 192.0.2.44 is the ip address for google which is machine friendly all right so dns converts domain names which are human friendly into ip addresses which is machine friendly so now let's discuss about the supercomputers that is the second segment of this particular video so supercomputers, they are also known by various names. For example, they are known by HPC. HPC stands for High Performance Computing. 
it is also known as HTC HTC uh, basically stands for high throughput computing and then uh, it is also known as MTC all right multitask computing all right so supercomputers are very fast computers your general home computers they are very small very slow working all right supercomputers are super fast all right they carry out millions of interactions per second so basically now if we come at calculating the speed of a computer a general computer your home computer or sub super computers they carry out certain sorry your general computer which is your home computer or your laptop they carry out certain number of interactions uh, instructions per second and therefore the unit of a general computer is MIPS that is million instructions per second whereas the unit of a supercomputer is not MIPS it is FLOPS which we call as FLOPS FLOPS stands for floating point operations per second so this is the first distinction apart from the speed that the unit of uh, speed is entirely different uh, general computer has MIPS the supercomputer has FLOPS now some supercomputers they have achieved the speed of as high as petaflops that is 10 to power 15 floating point operations per second which is tremendously very much than what you are having in your general home computers. Now most supercomputers they are operating at Linux operating system like your Windows is the operating system, Mac operating system is there, Mac OS for the Apple computers. Similarly Linux is an open source operating system just given mostly supercomputers kaam kar rahe hote hain. At least uh, jo top 500 computers hain, super computers hain, they are working on um, uh, this uh, Linux. So what is top 500? Top, top 500 is the list of the 500 fastest supercomputers. This uh, list is topped by IBM Summit 2018, which was developed. I, IBM Summit, which was developed in 2018, it is located in Oak Ridge in United States. It is having a speed of 148, 1,48,600 teraflops, which is approximately 148.6 petaflops. The second fastest supercomputer is IBM NVIDIA Mellanox Sierra, which was developed in 2018, which is located in Livermore in United States. It is having a speed of 94.64 petaflops, that is approximately 94.64 into 10 to power 15 flops. Third is the Chinese supercomputer. The third fastest is Chinese Sunway Taihu Light, which is having a speed of approximately 93.64. 01 petaflops and it is located in Wuxi, W-U-X-I, Wuxi, China. The fourth fastest supercomputer is NUDT Tihane 2. NUDT Tihane 2 is located in the Chinese city Guangzhou. Guangzhou. All right. Okay. It is having a speed of 61.44 petaflops. All right. Then next is Dell Frontera. Dell Frontera is located in Austin in the United States and it is having a speed of 23.52 petaflops. You pay attention to these uh, speeds. They are somewhere around 150, 90, 60, 23. Now let's talk about the fastest Indian supercomputers. The fastest Indian supercomputer is Pratyush, which is located at Indian Institute of Tropical Meteorology. And this IITM is located in the city that is Pune. All right, so Pratyush is located in IITM Pune and it is having a speed of 3.7 petaflops. IBM Summit ki mukabale dekhi iski speed. IBM Summit is close to 140, 150 uh, petaflops. It's merely 3.7 petaflops and it is ranked at 57 in the list of top 500. The second fastest Indian supercomputer is Nihir, uh, which is located at the National Center for Medium Range Weather Forecasting. All right, and it is having a speed of 2. Point, uh, so the speed is 2.57 petaflops and it is located at 100 position in top 500 list. All right. This list updates regularly. So keep a tab to uh, see the ranking of top five fastest supercomputers as well as Indian supercomputers. I will talk about the countries which have uh, uh, which have proven their metal in the uh, in the field of supercomputing. So countries performing best in supercomputer, the first is China. China is having approximately 228 supercomputers in top 500, followed by United States that has 117 supercomputer systems in top 500. Japan is having 29 supercomputers out of 500 in top 500, France 18 and then Germany 16. These are the top five uh, countries in the field of supercomputers. If we talk about India, India just has two uh, supercomputers and that two in top 100. And 
it can be extended even to top 500 also that India just has two supercomputers in top 500 supercomputers of the world. All right. So uh, if we talk about the general computer, so general computer operate and calculate using binary digits that is 0 and 1 and this is known as bits. For example, there are three places. These three places can be filled by 0 or 1. Like for example, it can be 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 0, 1, 0, etc. So this is how calculations are done by uh, classic computers. However, in quantum computers, one space is actually or each space can be filled by um, uh, filled with the uh, superposition of 0 and 1. Like for example, it can be filled by A0 plus B1 where A and B can have any value between 0 and 1. Alright, uh, such that A plus B equal to 1. So this superposition is known as quantum bit or qubit. Because A and B can take infinite values, infinite information can be stored in one, one particular qubit. So, jo classic com uh, itna hi yaad rakhe ki jo classical computer hai, wo classical bit 0, 1 pe operate karta hai, jo quantum computer hai, wo qubit pe operate karta hai, which is a superposition of both 0 and 1 bits. So, more information can be stored in a qubit than a classical bit and therefore supercomputers, they are highly uh, computing powers, they have very high computing powers, much higher than even the fastest of the supercomputers that humans can develop. This gives rise to understanding a concept which is known as quantum supremacy. So quantum supremacy is basically, uh, you can say that it, uh, it is achieved when a quantum computer starts solving a problem which is practically impossible for any of the supercomputer, any of the human made uh, general computer or the supercomputer to compute that problem then it is known as quantum supremacy. Quantum supremacy means solving a problem using quantum computer that cannot be solved using classical computers. So in 2019, quantum supremacy was in news because IBM claimed that it has achieved the quantum supremacy. All right, so this is all about the quantum supremacy. Now I would uh, uh, conclude the lecture here. So with, uh, I hope it was a good learning experience for you. Signing off, this is Akash. Stay home, stay indoors, be safe and prepare very hard for your uh, preparation. You may download the PDF of these uh, lecture notes from, you may download the PDF of the lecture notes from uh, the link given in the description. See, uh, it is, uh, we are covering a good amount of information in just small uh, time frame because of this fast forwarding of the lecture notes. I hope that you can very easily cope up with it. So keep tuned to the platform for such wonderful videos. Have a great day ahead. Take care. Bye.